Okay, now I should continue. I think everything's working now. I hope so. <laughs> so, as I was saying, uh, we know that there is a link between all the parameters that uh, we know about the galaxy clusters, luminosities, temperature, density, pressure, and the velocities. And so in this top right panel, this is a plot of how the luminosity changes depending on the velocities in the line of sight uh, through our cluster. And then we know that motions will cause the transport of metals uh, within the galaxy cluster. And this is a plot in the middle bottom of Virgo cluster. And this is a metallicity. And you can see an enhancement of the metallicity in the red peaks, for example. And the white contours correspond to radio observation. So it's a link between the aging and outflows and the metallicities within the galaxy cluster. And finally, we have also that uh, we know from simulation that uh, measuring velocities should provide a direct indication of sloshing of gas because we, we will see the structure of gas sloshing even for giga years. And this spiral pattern that I am showing here is characteristic of gas sloshing. And I will mention that over and over again about this spiral pattern. So there are ways to measure velocities. Um, for example, one way is using high resolution spectra and you can measure the light broadening and resonance scattering. You can estimate the velocities. And we have some estimations between 100 and 300 kilometers per second for the velocities really low. But there are some limitations on this method. The high resolution spectra usually provides you upper limits only. And you will measure the velocities real uh, in the cluster core, not uh, in the extended emission. So to measure velocities, we need uh, what's imagine. And we have Hitomi. Hitomi was really great to measure velocities of the Perseus cluster, for example. And we have found that the velocities are quite low, which is interesting because Perseus contains AGNs, outflows, big bar, a lot of things, and still the velocities are low. And simulation, for example, top panel is a simulation of the, and the orange region, uh, sorry, the purple region is the Perseus result. And these simulations only includes AGN outflows. And the uh, bottom panel is the, these are simulations only with gas flushing. And they also can reproduce the low velocities observed. So there is definitely a play in the, there between gas flushing, AGN outflows, etc. We lost Hitomi, sadly. There is no way to make more measurements. And future missions include includes extremes, but the field of view is small. And Hatina, we hope 2030, but who knows? Uh, so there is no way to do this. But in 2020, Sanders proposed a new technique, which is interesting because you, you will use the instrumental features from Epic Camera, from XM Newton, to improve the energy calibration scale. So here you have the CCDs, top left, and the field of view of the observatory. And there is a feature called Cooper hole. And in the bottom, you can see the hole. It is literally a hole. This hole is because uh, the Cooper line emission is not there in the center of the detector. The Cooper emission and these lines that are showing top right panel are instrumental, electronics, etc. It's instrumental uh, background. And the Cooper line, which is really prominent, is not everywhere. It's just in the outskirts of the detector. So the, this paper presents a way to use these uh, instrumental background lines to improve the calibration up to 150 kilometers per second in measurements of what of the redshift of the iron line. So you have the iron line, you have the redshift, and the calibration improves to 150 kilometers per second. The calibration, the nominal calibration is 600, I think, or 700. So it's a quite an improvement. And well, this paper have a lot of details about how the calibration is done. The calibration is done in, in, in time during all the life of uh, the telescope. There are three steps. One is the correction on time. The second step is the correction, a spatial correction in the detector of this energy calibration scale. Again, you have the Cooper hole. Because you have this Cooper hole, that means that there you cannot improve the energy calibration scale. So if you want to apply this to an astronomical object, you need to do offset 
observation. And that's what we do, uh, what we did after the calibration scale. This calibration was applied in this paper to Perseus, to Coma cluster, again, except for the central part of the cluster, which you can't apply. Um, interesting for Perseus is that uh, the velocity obtained with this method is in good agreement with the velocity obtained uh, with Hitomi. So it was a, a good uh, point there. Um, for Perseus cluster, there are hints. So top panel are simulations, bottom panel are the observations. And there is a hint of gas sloshing pattern. You can see the middle bot, the middle panel is velocity. Blue is blue shift the gas, red is red shift the gas. And there are hints of uh, gas sloshing. So they, they, this should be or will be a direct evidence of gas sloshing just by looking at the velocity of the galaxy cluster. But again, we don't have the middle part the cluster core. But then after doing this improvement, uh, Sanders applied for two large programs in Exomutant to observe Virgo and Apicius cluster with almost one megasecond of exposure time for each one. And then why these uh, sources were select, both are cool core system with AGN feedback in the core so we can measure the contribution of gas sloshing and also AN outflows. Both show numerous charged surface brightness edge or core fronts. I will talk about core fronts a lot later on. And core fronts are indication of gas sloshing too. For Virgo, Virgo is quite familiar for <laughs> cluster community. We have the uh, large jets in the middle. We have beautiful radio observations, bubbles. There is a lot of going on there. And Virgo in the center part, so this is interesting. And for Centaurus, uh, we have at least two dynamic components. So this is interesting to study uh, the velocity structure there. And then I will show you the all results, that's the, the, the analysis that we did. And these are the papers are from this year, very recent. So this is the X-ray image of Virgo clusters, uh, green, sorry, green circles are point-like sources that were excluded from the analysis. You can see the exposure map, top right panel. We have offset observations to cover all the cluster. And bottom planet, panel shows the, uh, this is number of counts around the Aeron K alpha one. So just as a hint of, yes, in the center part, we have very beautiful data. We can apply this method there. But you can see the holes in the outskirts. You, you cannot measure there the, the velocity with that precision. Well, I will show this. This is the method for all what I will show later on. What we did is a fit, uh, different fits, but the fits are quite similar between them. We have this energy range between four and 10. You can't uh, move to soft band because you are far away from the instrumental lines. So this works better for the iron K alpha line, works for the soft band. And the model is at TBAT's APEC, simple model for a cluster, it's very common. Uh, hydrogen density is fixed, it's okay, we are not working with the soft band. And the background, again, are these instrumental lines, not astrophysical background, but the instrumental lines to improve the redshift measurement. At the end, what we want is the distance of the Aeron K alpha line, the redshift, the velocity. And top panel, the bottom panel just shows a map of statistics for different regions that we fit just to show that the fits converge and the, the fits are really good in this uh, analysis. And then directly this probably is the most important figure, left panel shows the velocity structure in the bigger cluster. So it's color code, red is red shift gas, blue is blue shift gas in the line of sight. And then I uh, add here the contour from radio. So first of all, it's interesting that near the cluster center, you can see a blue gas, blue shifted gas in the left side of the plot and red shifted in the red uh, right side of the plot. So this is a hint of uh, the AEN outflows because they are following the radio structure of the uh, galaxy plot. But this typical uh, spiral pattern of the velocities is not there, definitely. So it is more complex than that. It's not only gas sloshing. We are uh, identifying there 
uh, characteristic of AGNO float two. The velocity errors are here. They increase as we move away from the process uh, core because the data and the exposure time is, is lower. And then we also have temperatures. We also have metallicity maps. For the metallicities, you can see how the metallicity increase uh, in the size perpendicular to the radio um, contours from the previous plot. So these wide regions are north, south, and the radio contours are west, east. So uh, these are uh, from metallicities and temperatures. But as I mentioned before, we are modeling the high energy band. So the temperatures and metallicities are not the best constraint because we don't have soft band there. But then you can compute pseudo densities, pressure, entropy maps. We did all of, all of them. And for example, for the pressure, it was interesting to find this ring of low pressure or lower pressure outside the cluster core because there was a hint for that in a previous paper, but uh, now we are seeing uh, very directly this uh, ring of pressure. And then after doing this spectral map, we want to determine velocities for different structures. For example, we create uh, this concentric ring map, maps, and we also have a concentric map divide in four directions. So we want to study the velocity structure there. For the concentric rings, so what we are seeing here is the velocities in the left side, temperatures and metallicities. Here we have uh, two colors because for this paper in particular, we test two models, APEC and SPEC. They are really, they, they agree in the results, so it's great. But the important thing is the velocities here. So for the velocities, we see that the velocities increase as we move away from the cluster core. And that is an indication of gas loading from simulations too. For temperatures and metallicity, we are finding, or finding are uh, similar to previous finding in the same cluster and with XM Newton data. Uh, we have, for example, a discontinuity in temperature uh, around 30 kiloparsecs away from the cluster core. And then uh, when we measure the velocities in four different directions, south, west, uh, north, south, the interesting thing is, again, you can see the inner region for the east zone, the blue one, is blue shifted with high velocity minus 1,000 kilometers per second. And then the same region, but in the west direction, is red shifted and really high. So again, this is a clear indication of the alien outflow there in the inner part of the cluster, near the cluster core. So we have X uh, radio data two for this cluster. And the radio data is really, it's quite beautiful. We have a lobe, we have flows, we have bubbles. The radio shows a, a lot of structure there. And what we did is, okay, taking uh, the radio data, we create uh, or we extract the spectra of different regions from following the radio morphology to measure the velocities. And then uh, again, we have found that the regions number one and two, which follows more or less the outflow, the INA outflow, show uh, the great difference in the velocities. So we are looking there for signals of signature of, of AGN outflows. And more interesting in some regions, for example, region three, we have found uncertainties down to 100 kilometers per second, which is great for this method and is uh, quite uh, interesting. And then uh, as another test, because we want to be sure about this at AGN outflow structure, we took our velocity spectra that I showed before, and we just feed regions to identify the kind of mean velocity in those regions. And again, you can compare region number one and region number two here, and the plot in the bottom shows the large difference in velocity. So we are definitely seeing from our velocity analysis, the impact of the AGM in, in this uh, cluster. But there are other structures there. As I mentioned, there are core fronts in this galaxy cluster. We have identified at least two core fronts. And the velocities in the 
In this call from the left one, you can see the velocities here. We have large uncertainties. It is not clear difference between the velocities. And this could be because of gas sloshing, because when you have gas sloshing, the velocity varies a lot in, in small regions, and then the uncertainties are really large. But in this cluster, in this, sorry, in this call front, you can see that there is kind of a trend, although the uncertainties are large as well, and the velocity increase as we move from one region to another one. This call front is more close to the cluster core, so it could be the influence of the AGN out from there. But in both cases, you can see the metallicities. The difference in metallicities is uh, really clear there. And the lack of significant metal mixing in cold front is a property of gas flushing. So in conclusion, from one side, we are seeing a signature of AEN outflows, but we also seeing signature of gas flushing in this cross. We have run some simulations, but these simulations do not include AGN feedback yet. Um, none of the simulations seems <laughs> to be like what we are watching in or we are seeing in our cluster, but it's okay because we think that we are identifying both AGN outflows and gas loshing. So only gas loshing can't explain the big across the velocity structure. Cannot explain. And those are kind of a main. Uh, conclusion for, for this cluster. So as I say, we have hints of AGN outflows from the velocity structure that we are seeing, but also for gas flushing. So we are identifying both effects in this cluster. So that's for the Vigo cluster. And then we have uh, similar analysis, but for Centaurus. For Centaurus cluster, again, this is the X-ray image, left panel. And the green points are point like source that were excluded from analysis. We have the exposure map, and you can see how well covered is the cluster. We have several offset observations with the epic and camera. And bottom panel shows the number of counts around the iron line. So it is great, the spectra is great, the data is great to do the, this analysis. And then we create again, the velocity spectrum maps. And the top left panel shows the velocity distribution, which definitely is really complex. Again, there is no clear spiral pattern here. So it could be that the line of sight is perpendicular to the uh, solution plane, for example, because we don't have so a uh, strong AGN interaction as we have in Virgo. But there is a blue, this structure here, this blue structure, which has very high velocity, is located near one of the galaxies and the system of the cluster, NGC 4969. So it could be that this is the uh, interaction directly from this uh, AGN in the system. And there is also a hint for a blue shifted <laughs> X-ray X right now, <laughs> blue chip, the X shape. You can see the corners, like we have a kind of four blue corners there. And some simulations show, if, in fact, uh, this kind of structure, simulation of gas lotion, at least for the northern part. But uh, it could be uh, a hint for gas lotion, but uh, of course, no simulation match exactly or emotional. And we have also map for temperature, a metallicity. For temperature, we can see the, this kind of uh, complex distribution of the temperatures, especially around the cluster core. Usually, it's common to observe uh, low temperatures uh, more uh, near to the cluster core than outside. But definitely, there is a complex structure here. And the high temperatures here, again, are located very near to the AEN outflow from NGC 4969. So it could be that that's the effect. And the metallicity, again, shows an enhancement near the cluster core. But I must <laughs> remind that we are uh, fitting the high band of the spectra, not the soft band. 
So the temperatures and metallicities are not very well constrained, but the velocities, yes. And then uh, again, we have done uh, some measurement of the velocity structure. So we extract spectra from circular regions and we move away from the cluster core and top, uh, sorry, bottom left panel shows the velocities. And similar to Virgo cluster, we have an increase, increase, increasement of the velocity as we move away from the cluster core. And this kind of, uh, it could be a gradient of velocity, is characteristic of uh, gas sloshing. And from temperatures and metallicities, we have found uh, a structure similar to one, the one that Sanders 2016 observed using Chandra data. We have a drop in the metallicity and discontinuities in the temperatures, which have been found uh, in previous observations. And then we divide these conceptual rings in two directions, trying to see if there is any kind of pattern there. But the velocity is really complex, so there is not much to say. Uh, the temperature profiles are quite similar between both directions, while the metallicities tend to um, be larger in the eastern direction as we move away from the cluster core. This could be due to the presence of the sub-components uh, in the cluster. We also have cold fronts in Centaurus cluster. We have identified at least three. Um, while the velocities, the uncertainties in the velocities are quite large, you can see here, bottom left panel, the velocities. The metallicity, you can see in bottom right panel, uh, change dramatically between one region and another of the cold front. And that's a characteristic of gas velocity. Also the high uncertainties in the velocities, because here we have beautiful spectra, really high, large number of counts. So it's not from the statistics because it is really hard to constrain the velocity. And that's a characteristic of gas velocity too. So again, in the Centaurus cluster, we are uh, identifying characteristics for both AGN, AGN outflows and gas velocity, but also the influence of some of the galaxies in the cinematics of the uh, cluster. So th these are the main points for each one, for gas velocity and outflows. I just mentioned the last one because we also have mass numbers, energy numbers uh, for, from this analysis. And we have found that the mass numbers and larger radius from this cluster are in the range respect for gas velocity. So definitely we are, uh, able to identify characteristics of both effects, a gen of and gas solution in this uh, cluster too. So that's uh, what we have done so far. And now we have, of course, a lot of work to do, a lot of interesting results that are coming up <laughs> soon, I hope. Uh, for example, uh, we can measure velocity structure functions because we now have this uh, spectral map with the velocities in, in all the cluster. And the velocity structure function is important because this is a way to measure the degree of turbulence, for example, the contribution of the turbulence. How turbulent is the gas? And this uh, panel, top left panel and center, are the results from Lee 2020 for the Virgo cluster. And this is H alpha line. This is not X ray. And this is really near the cluster core. So we want to do this kind of analysis and a comparison between the large scale structure with the low scale structure. So this is, we are doing this right now, measuring the velocity structure functions and comparing with other wavelengths like H alpha. And then we have also, because the data is great, we have large count, we have large processor time. So we are able to identify uh, abundance for different elements alone, like iron, calcium, sulfur, etc. And now we are also modeling the soft band. We figure out a way to do it. <laughs> so we have better constraints in temperatures. And you can also see how the different elements distribute in the cluster, which is great, kind of similar to the studies in supernovas that are done. Of course, this has been done 
a lot in previous clusters as well. But now for this cluster, we have really a large amount of data. So in these preliminary plots, you are you can see the iron distribution within the Centaurus cluster, but you can also see the calcium and the sulfur. And now all these are also constraints to simulation to see how the metals move in the galaxy cluster. And you can see a lot of black points. These points are point-like source that were excluded. Most of, most of them are AGNs or galaxies. And the another thing that we can do is to analyze them. Of course, we have for many of them, for many of them are AGNs, you have iron lines, and you, we have this method to measure with high precision the redshift of the iron line. So we are also doing this analysis of the iron line for the point light source, and we are comparing them with, for example, optical velocities and other wavelength. So this is a, another <coughs> an exciting uh, work that we are doing. Uh, more things to do. We have new observations. Uh, two years ago and last year, we have uh, do large programs approved from Exemutum to observe the Opicus cluster and top right panel is the image. The Opicus cluster was observed. The last observation was like three weeks ago. So this is pretty new <laughs> uh, image of the Pitius cluster top right panel looks really great. We have almost uh, 700 kiloseconds of observation there. And last year we uh, won another large program to serve A2029 cluster, which is uh, interesting cluster because their AGN is not uh, really strong. So that's our hope that we can finally find a really beautiful spiral pattern because probably it's just was sloshing what is going there. <clears throat> In the archive of XM and Newton, we have uh, other sources that we can analyze and we are trying to figure out because again, we need observations done in offset. So the source can't be in the center of the detector. So there are a few options, but there are some of them. Like for example, M86 and this cluster A2256. And we are analyzing them too, applying this method. And we want to resolve them with Chandra, which provides better resolution, angular resolution. And in the central uh, bottom center image, you have the uh, Opicus cluster. And we want to cover all the cluster around the cluster core because XMN, the field of view is large, our observations are covering a large part. We want to compare them with Chandra because Chandra has better angular resolution at the end. And we also uh, have an ALMA proposal. Uh, I, I suppose within the next week, we should have the answer for that one. Because one thing that we want to do is to compare these large scale motions with the low scale motion that you can obtain, you can measure the velocities uh, with ALMA really, really near the cluster center. This is for a PQS cluster too. So, a lot of work to do. Let's hope some of these uh, proposals are accepted. At least we have the XM Newton data already. And there is also the improvement to the method. Because the big, the, the big problem I would say here is that you are limited to the region outside the Cooper hole, as I say many, many times. But there are other background lines, instrumental backgrounds. So, uh, Top right panel shows all the background lines from XM Newton Epic camera. This is instrumental uh, background. And you can see, for example, the aluminum AL uh, line, which is already used uh, as calibrator, I think, for the energy scale. Um, we have titanium, lower chromium, etc. And even for the large energy, we have uh, some emission lines. And these are the maps of how these lines distribute in the detector. So the, for Cooper, you have the big hole, but aluminum, for example, you will cover all the detectors. So 
Right now, we are working on a new energy calibration scale that uh, could be applied to the central part of the detector. If sources, I hope, we hope. <laughs> so a new window is open for us because the uh, velocities and certainties are going to be really better than we already have. And we have 20 years of archive in XMM. And this method can be applied for a lot of things, not only galaxy clusters, because a lot of uh, clusters have been observed in the center part of the detector, of course, but you can also have any end. You will have the iron line redshift uh, with high precision measurements, the Magellanic clouds. You can have supernova remnants too. You can measure the velocities on these uh, uh, objects. And we are also trying to observe uh, and apply this method to the ISM near the galactic center to, to put some constraints in the velocity and the cinematic design. So we are working on that. And um, if uh, we figure out a way to apply this method to all the detector, it is gonna be really exciting uh, for us. Um, so I think that, I think I, I did this very fast. <laughs> Uh, so that's it, the main conclusions. I hope I have uh, convinced that the velocity structure of the galaxy cluster is important. Uh, I, told, I think that you already know that. Now we have a method to, that allows us to measure velocities with uncertainties down to 100 kilometers per second, which is great using XMN observations, but so far only uh, in the older part of the detector. Our analysis of the Bilbao Centaurus cluster shows both properties, AEN outflows and gas lossing is there. And um, now we have new observations of BQ's cluster and later on this year, we will have observations of A2029. More simulations are required for sure because it's really hard to find simulations that include both gas lossing and AEN outflows because it's hard to do, of course. But we need that to do a proper comparison with our results. And finally, we are working on improving this technique um, in order to study the cinematics of multiple astrophysical environments from ASM to uh, galaxy cluster as, as I showed. And that's it, I think. Yes. So thank you. Yeah. Can you do similar things for the velocity structure of galaxy groups or your massive alpha galaxies in the CDM? I suppose, yes. The, the thing will be always in this case where uh, the whole observation that we have are were done. If, for example, if you are inside this hole, uh, there is no. Right now, there is not much to do there. That's right. a problem. So you need the observation in offset. And usually, you don't have that. You want to measure your object. And that's, that's set by the angular size. Yeah. So you, you can choose something relatively nearby. Uh, Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, this is uh, usually I think it's usually the the main mechanism that people yeah talk about and talking about the lack of mixing, especially because you we are talking about sources uh, with AGNs uh, near the the cluster center. So for example, here, you can see how as you move. So in this case, region number one and two, this jump is quite evident. You are away from the cluster core, away from the again, but then you can see region three and four, which are real close. And that's different, the uncertainties are large. So yes, so far as I know, that's the main mechanism. Yes. I don't see chat. Can you read it? Yeah, so the question was 
Yeah, so we can share again the velocity of the in Aqua and the Falcon and Virgo as they can compare and reference. Yes. So, for example, this plot, if, uh, let's take the right one, which is more evident. Uh, we are talking about 100 kilometers between, yeah, 100 kilometers per second for the redshift gas and minus 700 kilometers per second. And then I will move away from, and depending on the region, Usually the gas loss in uh, the left plot, the left side plot shows the velocities for the different rings. And the gas loss in velocities are 500 kilometers in that range. So in the case of bigger cluster, uh, the blue shift gap is really high velocity in this case compared to the gas loss. But the magnitude, we are talking about the same order of magnitude, it's not crazy like. 10 times one to above. Yeah. Does that answer your question? So you, can you say we're returning to the final slide. So that if I understand correctly, you have this new method based on aluminum and I guess a couple of other instrumental lines, right? With the idea of the using those lines, you actually have access to the center of the detector. And you can then you know go into archival observations. Yeah. I guess I'm just curious, you know, if, if, if this does work, you know, how many clusters have you know like a megasecond at you know these low risk clusters? You yeah, can of course. Apply this to you if, if the new method works. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know because I uh, we need to figure out how good the calibration will be, because as as uh, as you say. Uh, even for the Cooper hole, we require large exposure time to, to apply this method, right? But what we want to do is to see how much can we improve the velocity and uncertainties, and then we can determine how well we can do it. But for example, there are some observations, uh, supernova remnants, which are in sometimes in the, in the region that we can apply the Cooper hole method, right? Uh, we have found there uncertainties down to 200, 250 kilometers per second with the archive data and supernova remnants. So it would be great uh, if we figure out a way to measure the center too. So, but supernova remnants are close. Usually you have a large posture for them. So, yes. yes. I don't know. We need to figure out it. Yeah, because yeah, I'm more curious you know, from the Dallas cluster side of things. Uh, yeah. of, of, uh, I mean, with the aluminum or these other ones, yeah. I mean, does it, would those require even longer exposures to get an equivalent calibration? Is that for for the for the aluminum? Not so far as we have done in our tests. No, uh, not as in copper. Um, in fact, the good thing about our new calibration is that we include simultaneously aluminum and also titanium from these lines are really low in magnitude, but they are there. So what we lost in the sense that aluminum is not as strong as Cooper, we win in the sense that we have more lines to do the constraint. Uh, but yeah, we are working on that. I, I don't have a number right now to, to see a low limit of posture, for example. Yeah. And in fact, we also, right now uh, we are kind of, Confidential, but we are also right now applying this to Erosita as well. Because for Erosita, we have also the background lines. So we see what's going on. Of course. <laughs> so I guess with, with comparing to the simulations, I mean, presumably the, the end goal is, you know, trying to understand better, say, you know, the microphysical processes yeah. and, you know, uh, viscosity and things like that. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any, I guess you didn't go into too much detail about that. Do you have any, you know, I guess long-term projections for, you know, say you would have six or eight or a dozen clusters with this quality of data and you get simulations that, you know, are advanced enough to actually match up with the data? I see. Do you have any sort of projections for you know, the actual physical infrastructure 
information you are able to receive? Yeah, well, uh, the simulation part is led by John Suhon and I think CFA, right? So for the application of the method, we are limited right now to this Cooper theme. So we only practically we have these four sources, do, Perseus, and comma without the center part. We have Virgo, Centaurus, Ophigius, and the, next, the, the new ones, right? So we have really low number of sources for that. But the good thing is that, for example, Virgo, you have really strong AGN in the middle. For Centaurus, you have components. For Opicus, the AGN is lower than uh, Virgo. And for at and 29, we have no outflow. So it's kind of uh, trying, we are trying to figure out a sample that covers different cases. Because in the simulation side, uh, usually you have gas losing or AGN. <laughs> it's really hard to find simulation with both. Um, but here we have some constraints and John is working on, in, in, he has done a grid of simulation of Virgo-like sources. And now he's including AGN now uh, there with the constraint that we are seeing in, in the observation side. So we are working more in case by case right now, more than in a big sample because that's, we, that's what we have. If we uh, achieve this aluminum of the new calibration for the central part, then we can figure out how many sources we can study, et cetera. But so far it's more a case by case. Okay, yeah. but it, it sounds like at, at this point though, the simulations are really limiting your interpretation, not, yeah. not the data even. I would say that, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, I would say so.